In this video, we're going to look at MySQL joins, and we are going to be taking three tables. In this case, we're working with a kind of forum like structure. So we've got users. Uh, these could be users that just register on your website or forum or something. Uh, topics, which are just forum topics. So we've got a title here. These are associated with a user. So rather than having a username, this gives a number which relates to the user's ID. Now this is an auto increment field. We'll be building these tables in just a moment. So don't worry if you are unsure how to build these up. Now with post, this is a little bit more complicated because we've got a topic here and a user association as well. Now what we're aiming for is we're aiming for a list of topics. Now what I've done here is I've just done a print R on the objects returned by MySQLi. And we'll be looking at this from scratch. So if that doesn't make sense to you, uh, you'll see what we're talking about in a moment. But we, we've got a title here, which is obviously the title of a topic. And this is obviously a topic listing. So this is just listing through all the topics that are in the database. We've then got a username. So without doing queries within loops, which is extremely bad practice and slow, uh, and unmaintainable, we have uh, the username being pulled in with this query. And we've also here got the count of the amount of posts associated with that topic. So this is really useful because we're doing one query, but we're accessing data from all three tables in our database. So that's pretty much what we're going to be doing. And by the end of this video, you should have a very good idea of how to join tables and uh, do things like count on tables. So let's go ahead and start to build out the database tables and then we'll go ahead and look at some code. Okay, so we're starting completely from scratch. I've got a database here called website and I'm going to create these three tables that we saw just a second ago. So the first one is going to be the users table. Now, don't worry which software you're using to actually create these tables. It really doesn't matter. It's exactly the same concept as long as you're using a MySQL database. So under users, this ID field has been automatically generated for me. But if not, if you're not using something like SQL Pro, you want to go ahead and add an ID field. This will need to be a primary key and it will need to be auto increment. All this means is that this will increment every time we create a record. Now the next field that we're going to have is the username and this is going to be a varchar and this is going to be say 20 characters long. It really doesn't matter because we're just playing around with some data here. So let's add a few test users in here. So I'll just add a few in here. There we go. So we've got four users in there. So we've got plenty of data here to, to test with. Let's now create our topics table. So this is going to have a topic title and it's going to be associated to a user. So for example, when you're creating a new topic within your website, you would store this, uh, the user ID along with this. So the user might be logged in, you might be storing the ID in a session, or you might have that just available. You can then insert this along with the record. So the title here is going to be a var charm, we'll say this 200 characters, for example, the user can remain as an int, it doesn't have to be 11 uh, length, but we'll leave that as it is. So let's create a few test to uh, topics and we'll associate them with some of the users that we have within our database at the moment. So I'll say test topic one, and we'll associate that with user one. So test topic two, we'll associate say with user two, and we'll have again, test topic three. Let's also say associate that with user one and we'll have test topic four. Let's associate that with user three and then we'll say test topic five and we'll associate that with user four. So we've included all of the users that we have in here at the moment just to test things out. And we've got five topics that we can work with. So now let's do the uh, third table, which is the posts table. So this is going to be the content that a user has posted within a topic. So as many users exist can post within a particular topic. So in posts, we need to say, well, we're going to have this associated to a topic. So this is again, an integer, this will just uh, uh, basically be the, um, the user's ID. 
and uh, the topic ID, sorry, and the user as well. So that's going to be, oops, the user ID, like so. So they can both remain as integers, and the body here will literally just be some text uh, that the user can go and just type in. So um, let's go ahead and create some test test in here. We're going to say topic, say one, and we'll say user one. And in here, let's just say, um, uh, let's just say this is a test. And we'll copy this just so we can save a little bit of time. So we'll also then target topic one as well. And we'll say user two posted this. And again, that will just be this is a test. And let's again fill out topic, say two, and we'll say user three. And we will add this in here. And we'll say topic three, we'll say user one, and we'll say topic three again and user one. So we're just sort of mixing this up really. Um, obviously, within a normal application, this would just be posted by users. You wouldn't be inserting data here. And uh, lastly, we'll pick, pick, say, topic five, and we'll say user four, like so. And that leaves us without a record with topic four. So that will have zero posts within it. So what we're actually doing here is we're assuming that a topic doesn't have to have any posts. So we're going to do a left join, which we'll look at in a moment. And that means that a topic always exists, but posts might not exist. So we're just assuming that a user can post a topic without an initial post. Um, that may not be the case in a real world scenario, but in this case, to learn about joins, we'll just assume that's the case. Um, and also, just before we start, a topic always must have a user. So we're going to be using an inner join for this. So these both must match. So um, a topic must have a user. Uh, a topic can't exist without a user posting it. But a topic can exist without posts being in it. So that's really important to remember when we look at this. So now that we've set up the database table, let's head over to our text editor and actually start to write out the query that's going to bring this in. And we'll start very slowly and then we'll start to introduce the joins as things start to get more complicated. So let's create a um, new MySQL instance just so we can quickly connect to our database. We're connecting to localhost here and my username is root and my password here is root and remember the database name is website. So we're now connected up to our database and we can issue a query. So I'm going to store a query's uh, result inside of this topics um, variable. So the query I'm going to split onto multiple lines just so we can read it a little bit better. So a very basic query just to pull out the topic title would look something like this. Select either everything, so that would select the ID and the title and the user. Um, so if we just head back to our database, that would select all three fields. So you could say select everything from topics like that. And we're going to do just a little while loop down here. And for each of these loops, we are going to fetch an object from this query or this result. So here what I'm going to do is I'm going to echo out some pre-tags and within this I'm just concatenating all this on I'm going to do a print R on that row. So all this does is it just wraps these in pre-tags so we can maintain the formatting and print R will give us a representation of what's in this row. So now you'll see something like this. So we basically just have objects so we can access the title, the ID and the user. So for example, I could do, let's just comment this out. I could do something like echo row title if you wanted to do that. But for now, we're just concerned about the data that comes out, not how we use it. So we've got the ID, which we don't necessarily need. We might use it eventually. We've got the title here and we've got the user. Now the user at the moment just is one, two, and that's useless. Now in a typical example, what you might do is you might then do another query in here to fetch the user. Now that would be bad because what you're doing is let's say you have a hundred um, topics you're then doing another 100 queries just to fetch the user. That's really bad practice because you, when you loop within a query, you're generating so many queries, you're generating so many requests to your MySQL server that you're just slowing down your application. 
So what we want to do is just keep things like this. We're not adding anything else within this while loop at all. We're doing everything within the query. Now this query is only going to be about six lines long, so it's not that much of a deal. So instead of selecting everything from topics, let's uh, specifically define what we need. Now I want to pull back the ID because I might want to link off somewhere and I want the title as well. I also want the username. Now this username doesn't exist exist in our topics table it exists in our users table so somehow within our query we have to say well this number here is equivalent of this username Alex so we need to join these records somehow so instead of saying select ID and select title I want to specifically define where these come from because otherwise what we do is if we have um, field match the same this is going to uh, cause a little bit of confusion uh, within this query. Now, ID is ambiguous. It could belong to topics, it could belong to posts, it could belong to users. So we are explicitly gonna define where we want this to come from. So we're gonna say topics.id and topics.title. And that's from the topics uh, table here. And because this query is pulling topics, we're always going to say from topics um, because that's the table we want to pull from. And then we want to additionally pull from the users and posts. So let's look at getting this username in here. So we've got ID and title. We want instead to have a username in here so we can output that. So how do we do this? Well, we again specifically define where we want to pull the username from. It exists in the users table. So we say users.username, simple as that. Now this isn't gonna work at the moment. It just, the query basically errors. So we get back this error message here. And the reason that happens is because we're not pulling, we're not saying where we want this to be sort of joined on. So all we do is we do an inner join. Now an inner join means that this exists on both sides. So if you think about joining, you have a left and a right side. Inner join basically means that a topic always has to exist alongside of a user. In an example where, for example, you have a user and maybe orders, maybe you have a website where uh, a user can take or uh, place orders, a user doesn't necessarily always have orders. So you can have users exist without orders. In this case, when a user posts a topic, a topic must have a user. A user might not have a topic, so if you were listing users, you would do a different kind of join. So that's a brief sort of explanation of the this inner join type. So we want to inner join users. So this is the name of the table. We're doing an inner join on users. So we now need to define how this relationship works. We need to know, um, for example, if we look at this, topics user matches topics user, uh, sorry, users.id. So this needs to link up with this. So we need to sort of tell uh, MySQL that this is the case. So we use the on keyword and we say on topics.user, so that's the field we've just seen, equals user.id. So these are what join up this uh, data. So let's take a look at this now. Okay, let's check what's happened here at the users.id. So there we go. We've now got f uh, five topics, which we expected. And you can now see that we've got the username here. Now, if you needed to grab any other data from the users table, for example, if you wanted the user's ID, you could do that like so. But there's a little bit of a problem here. When we say users.id, this then changes the ID here. That's not great because we're sort of overwriting this field. So what we can do is we can use the as keyword. So I could say user underscore ID, for example, and then that would give me an extra field here with that particular user's ID. So that's a little bit, uh, a little bit better. So that's just a little added thing if you, if you do want to do that. And uh, just to make sure you understand as this just pulls that in. Okay, so now that we've done that, we want to fetch the count of posts within this particular topic. Uh, 
So we, you know, we can do this again by looping within the while, uh, querying within this while loop. But again, that's bad practice. So we need to do a second join. Now, just to clarify, remember, a topic can exist in our case without any posts at all. You can have a topic, you can click through to it. It doesn't necessarily have to have any posts. Probably in a real world situation, you would do have posts, you would have at least one post. But in ours, we're going to say that we can have zero posts. So this time we do a left join. And the reason we do a left join on posts is because the topic is on the left, that exists, but on the right hand side of the join, which is the posts table here, that doesn't have to match up, it doesn't have to exist. So again, we're gonna use the on keyword. Now this time, if we look inside of topics, we have a topic ID and we have a post with a topic ID. So within topics or when we join posts, the topic here must match this topic ID here. And we've done that when we inserted the data. So we know that, that they, they match up. So here we're going to say topics.id equals posts.topic. So topics.id equals posts.topic. Okay. So that's uh, how we join that. Now, what we're going to do is we're also going to look at grouping because what, what's going to happen here is you'll now notice that we get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven results. What is going on here? The reason this happens is because we're not actually telling how to group this. Um, by grouping, what we actually do is we um, say, well, I want to group it by a specific table field. So I'm going to say topics.id and what that will do is it will say, well, the topics.id are unique. So each of these are unique and therefore now we have five records because we know that one, two, three, four, five are unique. So that's how we do that. So we've now actually joined that table, but we're not actually pulling in any data from this table. So let's just pull this down a little bit just so we can come onto the second line. And I'm going to say I want to join... Uh, sorry, I want to select the count of posts.id. Now, count will just count the amount of records based on that join. So here, what we're actually going to do is we're going to say as posts, like so. So this will just be a post count. You can call it post count if you want, whatever. So now what we get is we get a post count. So remember, we had two posts on that first topic so we can confirm that by heading over to post so we've got a post here two posts on topic one so that's okay we have got one post on topic two so we can check that out as well so we've got one post on topic two there which is uh, this post here and on th on topic three we've got two posts which is right we've got two posts there on topic four we've got zero we purposely didn't add that in and we've got one post on topic five so that looks like it has all worked so what we've done here is within one query we've learned inner joins we've learned left joins we've learned selecting from different tables and collaborating all of this data so we can output it in one while loop and we've done this all with one query so we are maximizing how efficient we can be. So that's how we do joins within MySQL, a very basic introduction, but this should give you the knowledge you need to go forward and create more complicated queries.